The first trailer for the Vince McMahon Netflix documentary series titled Mr. McMahon is officially released. Speaking of McMahon, a bit of an update when it comes to the ongoing lawsuit filed against him by former WWE employee Janelle Grant. Tony Khan, the AEW president, opens up on the negotiations between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery, saying that exciting things are coming. AEW World Champion Brian Danielson says WWE contacted him following his filing to trademark the Yes chant. The steel cage match between Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page is now a light out steel cage match. TNA wrestling star Rich Swan has been found guilty after a recent arrest. Plus, we have the ratings for Monday's edition of Monday Night Raw. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's begin with the trailer being officially released for the upcoming Vince McMahon Netflix documentary series. Now, the official trailer for Netflix's Vince McMahon docuseries has been released ahead of its September 25th release date. The highly anticipated series, titled Mr. McMahon, will consist of six episodes and chronicles the rise and fall of the former WWE CEO and chairman of the board, detailing WWE's global expansion and eventually the sexual misconduct allegations that led to McMahon's resignation from the company. Ahead of the series release, Netflix has now uploaded the official trailer to their YouTube channel, which can be viewed on their page, which features the likes of The Rock, John Cena, Triple H, Hulk Hogan, among many others. The official synopsis of the Mr. McMahon series is as follows, quote, Mr. McMahon chronicles the rise and fall of Vince McMahon, controversial businessman and co-founder of WWE, from his transformation of the WWE from a small regional business into a global entertainment powerhouse to the explosive sexual misconduct allegations that led to his eventual resignation. This six-episode series offers a deep dive into McMahon's life and his enduring franchise. Cold from over 200 hours of interviews with McMahon himself prior to his resignation, his family members, business associates, and some of the most iconic names in wrestling history, as well as the journalists who uncovered McMahon's allegations, filmmaker Chris Smith, Tiger King, and executive producer Bill Simmons, 30 for 30, present an unflinching, no holds barred look at one of the most enigmatic figures in sports entertainment. So of course, once that comes out, we'll be letting you know all of the details and the fallout of the documentary on Netflix. Now, speaking of McMahon, of course, there is an active lawsuit against him filed by former WWE employee Janelle Grant. And recently, there's been the twist of Dr. Carlin Coker. Now, according to Post Wrestling, Dr. Carlin Coker has withdrawn his litigation against Janelle Grant, according to a new filing in Connecticut Superior Court on Wednesday. Colker had been seeking evidence from Grant, a former WWE employee who is currently suing WWE, Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis in a separate federal lawsuit alleging sex trafficking and sexual assault. Colker's petition filed last month appeared to be a precursor to a possible defamation lawsuit before it was withdrawn this week. His legal action was a response to Grant's petition filed in July, also in Connecticut State Court, in which she sought to obtain medical records and other evidence to support her ongoing federal lawsuit against WWE, McMahon and Laurinaitis. Notably, Grant's petition against Colker remains active. In his petition, Colker claimed that Grant had launched a smear campaign against him and that he had suffered damages due to the media attention generated by her petition. Grant alleges she was directed by McMahon to visit Colker's clinic, Peak Wellness in Greenwich, Connecticut, where she received IV infusions and was just prescribed supplements without being told what medicines or supplements she was being given. She further claims that the medical records provided by Colker so far were inconsistent and incomplete. Both Grant and Colker were seeking to, to depose one another through their respective petitions. Additionally, Colker sought records of any communications Grant or her representatives had with the media. It's unclear what led to the sudden withdrawal of Colker's bill of discovery petition or whether a settlement agreed uh, agreement played a role in this development. Of course, we get any more details on that, we'll let you know in an upcoming video. Now, Tony Khan has commented on the rumours that there is an offer on the table from WBD, that being Warner Brothers Discovery, to AEW to continue continue their media rights agreement for the considerable future. Now, wrestling fans around the world have been anxiously awaiting the announcement of a new media rights deal between All Elite Wrestling and Warner Brothers Discovery. The current deal between the two companies is set to expire at the end of 2024. 
On the AEW All Out Media call, Tony Khan was asked to provide an update on the negotiations by Kevin Kalem of Sports Kida. Quote, it's a really exciting time for AEW. We are having great conversations. There have been a lot of reports and a lot of them have been pretty accurate about the status of the media deal between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery being something that has been a productive and ongoing conversation that we're still working on. There are a lot of details. You mentioned the future of the TV deal, which is something we all want. AEW on TBS and TNT. It's great to be wanted by TBS and TNT. I feel very fortunate that after being here for five years, there is still this great appetite and desire to keep AEW at TBS and TNT. It's a mutual thing. We love Warner Brothers Discovery. After praising Warner Brothers Discovery as a media partner, Khan went on to state that the two sides are still working through the details of the agreement, saying, quote, We're still working through the details of the agreement, which is a very long and tenuous process, but a good process to do. It can be long to figure out a contract for one person, one player, one athlete. Imagine an entire league doing an agreement for all of our events, all of the exciting things we're working on. There are some exciting things to come without revealing anything that would jeopardize our company or the great state of everything we're working on, there is a lot of excitement on each side. Khan finished off by acknowledging that there have been good conversations between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery, saying, quote, without getting into the future of streaming, I acknowledge there have been a lot of good conversations between AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery. There are a lot of things to be worked out, but it's a great time for AEW. This is going to work out really well for AEW and our fans. Of course, if we get any more updates on these negotiations or an announcement when it comes to a future deal, we'll let you know in an upcoming video. Now, Brian Danielson, the AEW World Champion, recently there was a story he filed to trademark his catchphrase he used in WWE. Now, AEW World Champion Brian Danielson says WWE contacted him following his Yes Chant trademark filing in July. In late July, Brian Danielson filed to trademark the Yes chant that he started during his time in WWE. Despite the chant becoming synonymous with Danielson for so long, the multi-time former WWE champion would initially not use it during the early years of his AEW run. However, this would later change. In a new interview with Luke James Chats prior to AEW All In, Brian Danielson was asked about doing his signature movement and chant at All Elite Wrestling, revealing that his former employer WWE had contacted him via email shortly afterwards. Danielson explained, quote, well, so it's weird. I applied for it, the Yes Chant trademark, but then I got, it wasn't necessarily a cease and desist. I got some sort of legal letter from WWE. Listen, listen, it's really weird because my manager just texted me and said, hey, this thing is available. Do you want to get it? And I was like, how much does it cost? And it wasn't that much. And I was like, okay, sure. And then shortly after that, I got an email from WWE saying, oh, this is infringing on this or that or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I just do my thing. Of course, All Out is this Saturday, and so many people are talking about the show-closing angle between Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page, with Page burning down Strickland's childhood home last night. And because of that, the stakes for the match this coming weekend have just been raised. As I mentioned on the September 4th edition of AEW Dynamite, Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page were scheduled for a contract signing ahead of their steel cage match at All Out. However, Page didn't show up in the arena for the contract signing and instead appeared on the big screen at Strickland's childhood home only hours after it was announced that Strickland had purchased it. After cutting a promo going over his rival's history, Hangman burned down Swerve's house and had a drink while doing it. After Dynamite went off the air, AEW President Tony Khan informed the live crowd that the match between Swerve and Hangman would now be an unsanctioned lights out steel cage match this Saturday on September 7th. Khan would then confirm the change via an announcement on Twitter, writing, quote, This Saturday, September 7th, Chicago, Illinois, AEW All Out lights out steel cage match, Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland. AEW can't be held responsible for what happens in Chicago at All Out when Hangman Page fights Swerve Strickland in an unsanctioned lights out steel cage match this Saturday. Now, recently brought you the story regarding Rich Swan and his recent arrest, and now we've got more details on the aftermath of it. TNA wrestling star Rich Swan has been found guilty after appearing in court following his June 2024 arrest. Swan was in court on September 4th after being arrested on June 8th in Altamonte Springs, Florida, and charged with disorderly public intoxication and causing a disturbance. In court, Swan entered a no contender plea, which means he was neither pleading guilty nor not guilty. 
guilty. As reported by PW Insider, Swan was found guilty and he was issued a $203 fine, six month probation, and also fined an additional $285.38 in a related fees. Swan's arrest in June came after he was accused of trying to enter someone's apartment, claiming it was his own when it was actually a short distance from his own. Shortly after that, he then allegedly followed a woman to her door, despite her asking him not to. When police arrived, they deemed that Swan was intoxicated. He was also suspended by TNA Wrestling after the company found out about the situation. And finally, we have the ratings for Monday's edition of Raw on USA Network. Things seem set for Raw to have a strong Monday night this week. Not only was WWE coming off a noteworthy bash in Berlin, a premium live event on Saturday, but the red brand had been pulling in solid numbers for the past month, ever since SummerSlam. Unfortunately, Raw had one thing working against them, the Labor Day holiday, which may have contributed to a lesser night than expected. WrestleNomics reports that Monday's Raw drew 1.652 million total viewers and a 0.49 in the 18 to 49 demographic. Both numbers were down from last week, though less so in total viewership, which decreased 8% from 1.796 million. The bigger decrease was in the 18 to 49, which fell 13% from a 0.56. Perhaps more distressing, the 1849 number was the lowest WWE had done all summer and their worst number in the demo since June 10. As one would expect, Raw didn't hold up well against the full week average, with total viewership falling 7% and the 18 49 dropping 13%, much as it did week over week. Despite this, Raw was up in both categories year over year against the Q3 and August 2023 averages, keeping the red brand in good shape as it heads into the start of the NFL season and direct competition against Monday Night Football next week. With plenty happening on Raw, the biggest occurrence was the continuation of the rivalry between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, which some thought was over after Punk defeated McIntyre at Bash in Berlin. Instead, McIntyre interrupted Punk's celebration by brutally attacking him, punctuating the moment by destroying Punk's bracelet, which has become an integral part of their feud over the last month. But there you go, guys. The latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.